The sole purpose of this video is to provide a basic overview and orientation of your new apparatus. This video is not intended to act as or replace individualized driver operator training. Individual fire departments may base guidelines, policies, and procedures tailored for best practices. Pierce Manufacturing and Hughes Fire Equipment representatives are not liable for injuries caused from acts resulting from actions inconsistent with the information provided within this video and or accompanying manuals. Refer to the Operation and Maintenance Manual for complete details relating to the components and features of this apparatus. Only trained personnel should operate this vehicle or perform maintenance. You are responsible for learning how to operate this fire apparatus under all conditions without having to refer to the manual while operating at an emergency incident. This video will discuss types of warnings and caution labels. It is your responsibility to locate and identify each of the labels and understand the importance and associated hazards. Warning labels will point out procedure that must be taken or action that must be avoided to guard against the possibility of serious injury or death. Caution labels will advise you that there is a risk of damage to property if certain precautions are not followed. Continuous training, reviewing of operation and service manuals, developing good standardized practices will assist driver operators with a more complete understanding of the components and operation of this fire apparatus. As the driver operator of this vehicle, you are responsible for understanding the function of each component of the apparatus, maintaining control of the fire apparatus at all times while in operation, make operational and functional changes while operating at an emergency without having to read operator's instructions or safety warning labels, operate manual override and emergency shutdown procedures immediately if a component fails to operate properly. Components location may vary with each Pierce Fire Apparatus. Review the exact location of each component prior to operation. Major inconsistencies between your vehicle and the information contained in this video should be directed to your sales representative. Safe operation of any vehicle is the responsibility of the driver operator. You must learn the location and function of all controls, switches, gauges, valves, inlets, and discharges. Due to a higher center of gravity, heavy trucks have a significantly higher rollover tendency than other types of vehicles. To reduce the risk of rollover, avoid making sharp turns, excessive speed, and avoid abrupt maneuvers. In the event of a rollover crash, an unbelted person is significantly more likely to become injured or die than a person wearing a seatbelt. In the event of a crash, unbuckled occupants can also become a hazard to other occupants as they may be thrown around inside the cab. Seatbelts are required while in operation. Please refer to your warranty certificates for details and information enclosed in your manuals. Customer installed equipment must be mounted to withstand road travel and comply with NFPA 1901. Modifications such as drilling holes or welding to structural frame components of the chassis are not permitted. Contact Pierce for instruction and review of non-structural sheet metal or other dissimilar metals for modification. Follow the radio installation guide for further assistance on installing or mounting electronics. Before placing your new apparatus into service, Perform a primary inspection of key components of the apparatus, including all fluid levels, anti-lock braking systems, electronic stability control, and automatic traction control. Weigh your apparatus to ensure that it conforms to axle and brake ratings. Never exceed the gross axle rating printed on the label inside the cab. Exceeding these ratings could lead to reduced component life, personal injury, or death. Review the use of auxiliary braking systems, compression brake, exhaust brake, electronic retarder, and hydraulic retarder. Before placing the apparatus in service, refer to the operational maintenance manuals. 
information on the operation and maintenance functions for the components such as the pump, pressure governor, and foam systems along with other options is provided in either the Pierce manuals and or other manufacturer support information delivered with the apparatus. If you need more information, please contact Hughes Fire Equipment. Congratulations, Kaiser Fire Department, Oregon, on your new Pierce Fire Apparatus, job number 34982. Please utilize this five-digit job number when referencing your apparatus with Hughes Fire Equipment and Pierce Manufacturing. Let's get started on a brief orientation of your new apparatus. Let's start at the front bumper area. Just under the front bumper, you'll find on the passenger and driver's side two spray nozzles. Moving upward onto the angled edge of the bumper extension, you'll find your electronic siren and PA speaker. Moving up onto the bumper extension on the passenger side is where you'll find your turret. And as we move to the bumper extension area, you'll find 3D handles to gain access into three individual spaces for hose storage. As we move to the outer edge, you'll find a swivel discharge. Moving up onto the cab of the vehicle, you'll find your headlight structure housing low and high beam headlights and turn indicator. In the grill area, you'll find forward-facing emergency warning lights. Directly above the Freightliner logo is where you'll find the grab handle for tilting the hood. Let's take a look at some close-ups. First, we'll start with the spray nozzles, one on the passenger and one on the driver's side. Moving just under in the frame rail area, you'll find two tow hooks open-ended on the passenger and driver's side frame rail. Onto the outer edge of the bumper extension angle, you'll find your Whelan siren and PA speaker system. Also, as we move to the bumper extension side area, you'll find a side-facing emergency warning light. Moving up to the top area, you'll find your swivel discharge, once again, inch and a half. As we move down into the cutout area, you'll find the ball valve for turning on or off that discharge. As we move across the bumper extension, you'll find tubbed storage locations. There are three D-handle gains access into each of those. Let's go ahead and take a look at the turret. This is on the passenger side, controlled from within inside the cab area. As we move up onto the grill area, just each side of the Pierce logo is where you'll find your forward-facing emergency warning lights, headlight structure housing low and high beam headlights, and turn indicator. As we move around to the top of the fender area, you'll find your air intake, and on the fender directly over the front wheel is where you'll find your turn indicator. Moving downward to the wheel, you'll find Michelin tires and also Alcoa wheels. As we move to the rear section of the fender, you'll find the two release mechanisms for releasing the hood on the passenger and driver side and also an indicator to remove the front bumper turret. As we move down to the driver side of the vehicle, you'll find the silver ultra low sulfur diesel fill location. Right next to it, you'll find the blue DEF fill location. Moving further back, you'll find your auto eject shoreline inlet and also an indicator regarding the charge status. Easily accessible door handles, keyed locks, and also grab handles at all points of entry located at the rear and forward section of the door. As we move to the very top, you'll find your emergency warning light bar. Let's take a look at some close-ups of the items we just talked about. First, let's start at the very bottom. This is just under the fuel tank and it's where you'll find your perimeter lighting. As we move up, you'll find the silver cap. This is going to be your ultra low sulfur diesel. Moving just to the rear of this location, you'll find the blue def cap. As we move up onto the cab itself, you'll find your mirror housing a flat mirror in the upper portion and a convex mirror, both individually adjustable. Let's go ahead and move inside the cab area. Let's first start with the door panel. Affixed to the door panel, you'll find all of our safety and warning information placards. You'll also find this yellow placard, which is the placard manufactured by Pierce regarding your apparatus. This information housed on this placard will be the date of manufacture, the five digit job number, gross vehicle weight rating, cold tire inflation, all of the fluid and fluid components and fluid types. Let's go ahead and move inside the cab area, first starting with the operator seat. You do have an air ride seat for up and down ride control in addition with front to rear. As we move to the base of the seat area, you'll find your master battery switch located on the floor area, quarter turn to engage the batteries. As we move to the floorboard area, you'll find your accelerator and brake treadle. Just moving to the left, you'll find about the left knee your keyed ignition. 
Moving up onto the dash itself, you'll find this black placard indicating the height of the vehicle, 10 feet, 2 inches, length of the vehicle, 26 feet, 2 inches, and a gross vehicle weight rating, 35,000 pounds. We also have four switches located on the side of the dash panel indicating the speed control, set, excel, and coast. Also, you'll find headlight control and increase or decrease for lights within preview of the operator. As we move to the dash area, let's start with a few of the gauges on the dash cluster. First, starting on the left, you'll find your transmission, water temperature, and oil pressure. Moving to the right-hand side, you'll find front and rear air. There is also a combination gauge at the very top section, indicating the ultra-low sulfur fuel and DEF level. Tachometer and speedometer located directly in the center. As we move just above that, you'll find diagnostic engine information will display in the area above. Let's move just to the right where you'll find your engine air filter indicator. Let's move just to the right of the dash cluster where we'll find a few more operational items. Let's first start at the very top with your diff lock and also Allison transmission pad. This is a digital readout and push button. Moving just to the right, you'll find electric window controls for all four windows. Also, you'll find your pull to apply your system parking brake and push to release. To the right, you'll find mirror heat, door locks, region information, also load manager, and also all-wheel drive button. As we move to the very upper right-hand corner, you're going to find two outlets. This is 12 volt, either USB style or cigarette lighter style. Let's move downward from this location where you'll find your climate control for air conditioning, heat, and defrost. As we move to the center console, we'll start at the very top section with your tally lights indicators. Also, you have multiple switches here controlling emergency warning lights and also your pump controls. As we move further down, you'll find pressure control module. Moving back up to the very top section, you'll find the joystick, which controls your turret located on the right front bumper area. Moving further down, you do have an air horn push button, control module for your electronic siren and PA speaker, electric prime for your water pump, and also a digital readout regarding pump pressure and also an indicator for tank water level. Some additional switches located down at the very bottom section and also future switch locations if you find that necessary. Let's first start with the first switches on the left. You have driver side sweep and passenger side sweep. Let's take a look at the items we just talked about in close up. Once again, these are the tally lights that we indicated. Also, as we move down, you'll find switches. Once again, emergency lights, main control for your pump and foam system. Moving further down, you'll find your pressure controller in cab control. Moving further to the right, you'll find the electric prime digital pump pressure and water tank level indicator, air horn, and also siren and PA speaker control. Moving just to the rear section, you'll find storage location for map books or other supplies. Let's go ahead and look overhead of both seats in the very center. You'll find push on and off white lenses for reading lights and also storage location above that. Let's take a look at the rear wall or rear cab of the truck. There are two seats located on the outer edges and also your battery charger. This will activate when plugged into the shoreline outlet, which is on the lower right hand side of the step area. As we move underneath this area, this is where you'll find your perimeter lighting or step lighting. This compartment does have a D handle to gain access for additional storage location and dry deck material on the inside. Let's take a look at the battery charge. Once again, when plugged into shore power, the auto eject, your shoreline charging will start and indication will be displayed on the module itself. Let's move now to the body of the vehicle. We'll start first at the lower section of the pump panel area. This is where you're going to find all of our labeled color coded discharge drains. As we move up onto the pump panel, starting on the left hand side, you'll find the driver's auxiliary inlet. This is a two and a half inch ball valve female coupling. In the very center, you'll find your foam operations for draft and tank. And as we move to the right, you'll find the number one discharge. This is a two and a half inch ball valve. As we move up onto the pump panel, you have some warning information here regarding not mixing different types and consistencies of foam for the possibility of foam failure. There's also an air inlet located in this area and also a warning regarding only trained personnel should operate this piece of equipment, and that's only after they received proper training. Let's move upward where you'll find your large diameter pump inlet, and then just to the right, once again, warning labels, 
but all the way to the very far right, you'll find your minimum operation maintenance schedule for test pressures at 150, 200, and 250 PSI. Behind the pan door, you'll find foam operations. The yellow handle has instructions on the back side of the door regarding foam fill operations. You do have an engine cooler, it's a twist. Moving further to the right, you'll find your tank to pump. Do note that in is open and out is closed. As we move upward, you'll find your tank fill and recirculating line. Moving upward on the pump panel, you'll find the real discharge, which is foam capable. And then also just to the right, your electric pime push button. As we move to the left of the pump panel, you'll find this warning regarding pressure hazard. Caps may be under pressure. Be cautious when opening them. To the right, you'll find the engine cooler. It's a twist, not a pull. And then moving further up to the very top, you'll find the number one speedlay. It is also foam capable. Let's move up onto the uh, pump panel in the upper section. We'll identify a few items. Let's start on the left-hand side of the pump panel at the lower section. This is your pressure throttle governor. As we move just to the right, you'll find an additional pressure controller on off switch and also it has information here regarding the status of the actual pressure controller with instructions on the right. As we move to the red, you'll find your Husky foam system. It is the red module, a real rewind for your booster line. And as we move all the way to the very top right corner, you'll find the vacuum and pressure. These are test gauge ports and they are currently plugged and are for testing purposes. Let's move up further just above that is where you'll find your pump hours, an OK to pump indicator, and also an audible alarm. The outer edge of that bezel does allow you to dampen or brighten the sound. Just to the right, you'll find indicators for your foam tank level and water tank level indicators. As we move to the left, you'll find the two gauges, master gauge, pump discharge, and pump intake. As we move just to the left, you'll find your cross lay. This is the storage location here with the vinyl flap. Moving upward, you'll find your booster line hose reel. Just off to the side of that booster line, you'll find a black knob. This is the free spool or tension regarding your booster line. Let's go ahead and take a look at the body. We'll identify a few items here. Let's start at the rear axle. Once again, Michelin tires and Alcoa wheels. Just up from this location in front of the axle and also to the rear of the axle is where you'll find SCBA bottle storage locations. As we move up into the compartment directly over the rear axle, you'll find a pull-out and tilt-down shelf. The two release mechanisms are located on the right side, close up here of that release mechanism. Let's move to the rear section of the axle where you'll find an additional storage location and also a rear emergency warning light. As we move upward into the next compartment up, once again, adjustable shelves. At the very bottom section, a pull-out tray and also a tilt-out. The lower section of this allows for a lock mechanism. It will lock in when it's in the open position. You must release to restore. At the upper section, you'll find a pull-out and tilt-down tray. Once again, the release mechanisms on the right and left. You also have an LED tank level indicator on the uppermost portion of the body on the passenger and driver's side. Unit identifier, emergency warning light, and also side-facing scene light. Let's move around to the rear of the apparatus. We'll identify a few items within this area. Let's first start with a drop-down step area. We'll move just inside of that location. At the very top section, you'll find a warning label regarding pressure hazard. Caps may be under pressure. Be cautious when opening them. You'll also find discharges located on the passenger and driver's side. This is a 2.5 inch rear discharge ball valve. Directly in the center is a direct tank fill 2.5 inch ball valve. As we move to the right, you'll find an inch and a half discharge. And then all the way to the far right in the image is where you'll find your backpack fill location. We'll go ahead and take a look at some close-ups of the rear section of the apparatus. You'll find the steps, also brake, turn, reverse indicator, and an emergency warning light. Steps for gaining access aloft. Along with those steps, you'll find some warning information, entanglement hazard, and also always face the vehicle when climbing. Never ride on the vehicle while it's in motion. As we move up to the very top section, you'll find host storage location and also long handled tool storage accessible from the top area. In the very center, you'll find an additional storage location at the rear. Two doors gain access into this space and also adjustable shelf. 
As we move to the right side of the vehicle, you'll find additional hole storage on each side. You'll find additional hatch storage locations for gaining access into those. As we move to the dunnage, you'll find your top fill location for your foam tank and also water tank fill. We do have a warning regarding foam failure hazards, mixed different brands or consistencies of foam. Also, additional access panels located at the very top for all of your hatch compartments. We'll go through those now. Let's go ahead and move now to the right side of the vehicle in the rear where you'll find an additional storage location. Once again, long handled tool storage or additional equipment. As we move down to the very bottom section, once again, you'll find your brake, turn, and reverse indicator, also additional steps. D-handle in the very back section is going to be where your ladder storage is located. As we look inside the storage compartment, once again, D-handle will gain you access into this space. You'll find a three-section ladder at the very top section. You'll also find additional long-handled tool storage. Let's move around to the side of the vehicle. This is going to be the passenger side, just a quick view. We'll start down at the rear wheel, mud flap, and also Alcoa wheels, Michelin tires once again. As we move to the upper, same layout and configuration on this side, emergency warning light, and also additional storage in the lower section. As we move just upward from this location into the compartment, you'll find two adjustable shelves and LED lighting. As we move to the exterior, You'll find a side facing scene light, emergency warning light, and also unit identifier 375. As we move to the wheel itself, just in front of the wheel is where you'll find, and to the rear, additional SCBA bottle storage. There are two storage locations in these areas for at least two SCBA bottles. Let's move upward from this location where you'll find a side facing scene light and also water tank level indicator. Moving now to the midsection of your vehicle, grab handle on the left hand side and the right hand side of the cab. We're now at the pump panel area on the passenger side. Let's go ahead and start with some of the items within the pump panel area. You do have an angled door for access into this space. D handle gains you access, but let's start down at the very bottom with the passenger side auxiliary inlet drain. This is just underneath the step well area. Let's move upward from this location. This is the two and a half inch ball valve auxiliary inlet female coupling. Moving once again upward, pressure warning hazard. Also you'll find the Darley placard regarding capacity and pump model type. We do have also a two and a half inch discharge located on this side. It is reduced down to an inch and a half. As we move up, this is the valve controlling that, the number two speed lay. You'll also find at the very top section, your reel rewind and also a push button for that. Just as a reminder, the cross lay is a dead lay. As we move further up, you'll find a lift and turn latch will gain you access behind the pump panel area for service and maintenance. Let's move down to the front section of the cab area. Identify a few items within this area. First, on the rear cab area, you have additional D handles to gain access into storage compartments just under the rear cab area. As we move just above this location into the door area gaining access inside, we do have some additional warning labels here regarding slip hazard. And then also as we move inside the cab door, affixed to the door panel, all of our safety and warning information. This is the rear section of the cab. There are two seats located in the rear, forward facing. In between those two seats is where you'll find your battery charging system. When plugged into shore power, once again, this will become active. Let's look to the center console where you'll find to the rear, two USB style 12 volt access points. As we move to the forward section of the door, this is the officer area. You have additional slip hazard information and also warning information on the door panel. At the seat for the officer, you do have air ride control. Moving now to the dash area, directly over the dash areas where you'll find storage and also reading lights. Let's move back out to the exterior front axle where you have Alcoa wheel and also Michelin tires for your front wheel. As we move to the officer door area, You'll find your mirror housing a flat and convex mirror. Each of those are individually controlled. As we move to the front section, you'll find this warning regarding remove the turret prior to tilting or opening the hood. You'll also find the release mechanism and turn indicator. Just a glimpse at the headlight area, turn indicator, low and high beam headlights. 
As we move around, we've got a close-up here of the turret on the passenger side. Just down from the turret area is where you'll find your side-facing emergency warning light. And then also just on that angle of the bumper extension is where you'll find your PA speaker and siren. As you move toward the front, you'll find the front right and left sweeps. And now we'll go ahead and just take a quick look at the full view of the truck from the front looking at the passenger side. Congratulations, Kaiser Fire Department, Oregon, on your new Pierce Fire Apparatus, job number 34982. If you have any questions regarding your vehicle, please contact your Hughes Fire sales representative. Thank you and congratulations.